All right, welcome back YouTube. Um, today's video. I know it's been a while. I need I need a break from this game sometimes. Um, but I'm back for you guys. I just realized, you know, I'm always making content. Um, let's see, I'm always making content based around boss fights and what's best on the boss for this and that. And that's just mainly because the boss is the only quote unquote fun thing to do in this game. For me, at least, been playing this game forever. But for some of you that have been subscribing as of recently, I know a lot of you are new to the game. I'm going to show you, you know, just for everyday mobbing and everyday use, not boss fights, but everyday use, what are good guns and just decent gear, just, just little things minimal, no need for buffs, no need for this and that, but how you can do maximum damage and even have max survivability, but mainly just the damage part will show because the survivability part should be a last priority, um, and I know since you're, if you're new to the game, it's going to be a lot harder to grind for those levels to get all your legendary cards maxed out to add on some ability. So we'll just talk about the damage today. Um, I'll go kill some super mutant scorch beasts. Just some little things, and I'll show you guys how you can maximize your damage, um, and just so you can get a build going for yourself. Um, let's see, it is 8 p.m. in game. So what I want to do here, if you can see the build, um, we won't really go into super super detail about survivability. Um, as I've done it in my past videos, but my strength is here. Um, I do fight bosses, so that's why I carry this, because I carry a lot of chems. Um, damage resist, it's cool, survivability. This is all survivability, some quality of life. I carry a lot of ammo. This damage, you know, you need your rifles to do more damage, because that's what we're using, is automatic rifles. Um, automatic rifles, just reload faster. We, this is very important, tank killer. This is damage right here. 36% of your armor is, or ignoring 36% of your target's armor is very important because you're ignoring that armor, you're penetrating that armor, you're doing more, um, it's as if they're, you're basically doing a certain threshold amount more damage now that you're ignoring that percentage of armor. Very important to have that. More commando cards, just basic, cause these, this is your automatic rifles, so you've got to use commando, um, all three of them. Concentrated fire was nerfed slash fixed before one wasteland. This was broken, and if you had it maxed out, your accuracy at range was insane. Um, along with the damage was a little bugged. It, it did more than what it said. So they, they nerfed it and fixed it, so now it just does the same no matter if you have three ranks or one rank. So you just keep one rank just so you can switch between limbs. So if you're wondering how some people in bats are able to do any target anything except for just the torso, it's because they have concentrated fire. You just you can, now you can target all the other limbs, any limb you want. Okay. Uh, radical. I just had an extra slot, so I put that there. More strength, more carry weight, whatever. Um, Revenant. This is going to be our main source of damage, and I'll get into that further um, in a bit. But this, and, and you can do this solo. This perk works solo, and I'll show you how. And it's very easy to get it to proc. This doesn't require RNG, it's not required trading for a god tier armor set. This is something that everyone can do. You just gotta bend or hop and you can find the armor required to do this solo. Um, I'll show you that in a bit. Lone Wanderer, we're alone, we're traveling by ourselves. This does not work, obviously, in a team. But even if you're in a solo team, like let's say you create a casual team in a private server, you create a casual team and it's just you. This perk will not work in that. The coding in that team... Whatever, I don't know how it worked, how that exactly procs in the game, but the game somehow knows it gives you that team label, that team UI label on you. So this perk, I've tested it, does not work, and the data miners confirm that I am correct. This perk does not work when you are in a solo team, even. You have to be completely solo, out of a team, like I am right now, with just my health bar, no team, okay? Um, and I'm using it because I'm not in a team. Now, this build does not revive, revolve around you having to not be in a team. You could be in a team. Matter of fact, I'll show you in a little bit why it's actually beneficial to be in a team. Especially if you don't have some of these gear and mutations that I have. Um, but for now, I'm using Lone Wonder, more AP regen, less damage, okay? Uh, go happy, go lucky. Mainly use this for my boss fights when I'm, um, fighting Scorch Beast Queen. And half the time, her or her minions that have random sonic yells and things hitting my way, sometimes I'll catch the Blight, which the Blight is a disease in this game, 
that for an hour you have minus one to all your special stats. So if my luck, right, and you got to mix luck, 33 luck with critical savvy in order to hit a crit, a critical hit every other shot. So if your luck's any lower than that, you're not going to hit a crit every other shot and your DPS goes way down. This, every because when I do boss fights, I'm on, I usually drink Ballistic Bok to boost my damage. Ballistic Bok is an alcohol. So when my luck is increased by 2, which it becomes 35 when I'm in a boss fight. Oh, uh, wait. My current luck right now. Hold on. Oh. Okay, yeah, 33. So when I drink Ballistic Bok, I get 35 to luck. And after I catch the Blight, that's fine. I'll be at 34, which is still 33 and higher, so I'll still hit a crit every other shot. The blight doesn't affect me. That's why I keep that there. Tenderizer, you need this card. Very, very important. You need this card. Oh, it's only 10%. That's it's multiplicative 10%. Alright. You're it's near like 50, 60 more damage output than what you're already doing. It it increases by a massive amount. It is multiplicative. It is one of the very, very, very few, I wouldn't even say few, it's just one of the couple rare things in this game that's still multiplicative after the one wasteland damage nerf that turned everything into additive damage. Everything is additive, including damage, except for like this and one other card. But this is multiplicative, this 10% is massive multiplicative, okay? You need this. You must have this. Nerd Rage, we're going to be going bloodied. Um, if you want to get the max damage, you got to go bloodied. I know a lot of you have anxiety. I, I've been through it, but uh, I've been playing this playstyle for over a year and a half. I, I can assure you I've died a lot less than those who are full health and think they're tanky. Um, while below 20% health, you gain damage resistance, which is good. 20% more damage, very, very important, is that damage. 15% AP regen. Okay? So already... You know, two cards, you're getting AP regen, and you don't even need AP refresh armor. You literally already have two cards so far that are giving you AP regen. Okay, but more importantly, the damage. Um, Demolition Expert, if you like to use explosive guns, this is good to use. Um, but just be careful, you might blow yourself up. Gunsmith, I have infinite materials enough to fix guns that break. I have 300 improved repair kits that just keep stacking up the more I do boss fights. But I just like to have this just because I'm sick of things breaking in the middle of fights. I just, I just, I'm OCD like that. I'd rather just have this. And if you're low, especially if you're low on materials and you don't do boss fights and you really don't have any repair kits, you definitely need this so that your guns do not break as quick. Okay? Now this is the nitty gritty stuff. So it is 10 p.m. So in your pit boy after 6 p.m. in game, so between 6 p.m. and 6 a.m. is nighttime. Okay. You see this 2.5 times normal damage in sneak. Okay, that's good. So all your sneak damage, um, 2.5 times normal damage. This at night between 6 p.m. and 6 a.m. Your silent weapons has to be silent with the suppressor, obviously does 50% more sneak damage. So, I'm gonna get back to this combo in a minute. There's something specific you have to know. Escape artist, in case you get caught by a rad rat or most, or a rat or the mole rat or a rad scorpion, those things, perception, you will not, no matter what your sneak is, no matter if you have a sneak card, hard to detect, they will detect you, they will catch you. And sometimes accidents happen, this makes it so you can sprint a little bit ways away, get back into sneak, and you will go back into caution and you can sneak some more, okay? Very good perk. Gung Fu. This 10% is additive, so when you're switching targets, it's only like 3, depending on what target you're swapping to, damage is like 10 max, maybe 5. So it's not really much. The reason why I'm using this card is because when you have a mob, in front of you and you're in VATS, they buff this card to every time a, a target that you kill instantly dies. The game instantly swaps you to the next one. So if you're like one tapping everything and there's a big mop, you're literally just going to just knock them all down within a couple seconds. It's very, very quick the way this thing snaps the targets. You basically have aimbot with this thing. So 
That's why I have it on pretty vital um, for this build. Adrenaline, every kill gains 10% more damage to your weapon, up to a max of 60%. Till this day, this card has been run since the beginning of time, and it will continue to be a very vital card. You need this uh, card, especially now that we're trying to punch out as much damage as possible. You need this card, Adrenaline. Max out Adrenaline, okay? Dodgy, this is just survivability. Um, in case I want to run around and not sneak, I can have survivability. And they did buff it, so if a target shoots you or hits you, it will drain your action point by 30, but that target cannot drain your action points for another two seconds. But during that two seconds, you still keep full damage resistance, full damage reduction, giving your AP time to refresh. So no, this is not an AP drainer anymore. Bloody mess, punching out more damage, right here. More damage. Better criticals, so every second shot. Assuming you're shooting a crit every second shot. Your, uh, your criticals, which is the second shot, does 30% more damage, okay? Which is multiplicative, which is massive for that second shot. Charge genes, we never lose mutations. Mutations are important, I will go through them. Critical savvy, mixed with 33 luck, thanks to unyielding armor. Um, makes it so that the critical meter, that meter when you're in vats, so when you hit a crit, it only takes the meter down a little bit to halfway, instead of just completely. It only goes halfway, and because your luck is 33, that next shot will then fill the meter back to full, so the shot after that next shot can be a crit again, and you can just keep critting every second shot. That is why you need this card maxed out, okay? Quick hands. This, arguably, and this, if you want to, can be altered out during everyday mobbing, that is, just for weaker enemies, if you want to use Serendipity, Ricochet, Grim Ripper Sprint, all these ones I have down here, restores action points on kill, instantly restores all of them on kill. Ricochet is basically giving you more damage reduction. Serendipity is a 45% chance that the damage that hits you is completely avoided by you. So you completely avoid damage with this card. You can you can switch them you can, if you want to. But I just keep them here because, especially during double XP, which I think just passed, I don't know, I haven't been keeping up, it just passed, but if it didn't pass and it's coming up, and you have a quad, or you have some bloodied or something like that, and you would just like to run around and do quick runs through XP farms, this will give you a good chance that when your weapon hits zero, it instantly fills again. Without you reloading, you can instantly can you can just go through another round without reloading. It's best for boss fights, but still useful for everyday mobbing. Um, and this is a DPS perk. No matter what you're doing, whether it's a boss or DPS, this is definitely a DPS perk. Because you don't have to reload. The less you reload, the more damage you can put out in a shorter amount of time. True DPS. That is what that is. Okay. But the main thing we're looking for on this build, you just need all your commando perks and tank killer, okay? Revenant. Tenderizer. Make sure you're writing this down. So all commando, tank killer, revenant, tenderizer, nerd rage, uh, adrenaline, gung fu, overt operative, Mr. Sandman, Bloody Mess, and Critical Savvy, Better Criticals, and Quick Hands. Get that all down. Now, still a good time. Yep, now let me show you this. Let me take off Mr. Sandman, and you can see um, what's going to happen. So this says Covert Operative 2.5, so it's pretty straightforward. Um, Let's go over here. There should be some scorched. Turn enemy. So, oh shoot, 
screen shake. Okay. 2.5. He's really far. 2.5. Okay. Let's add on. Oh, what is that? Mr. Sandman. So an extra 50%. Three point five. Okay. Now, what you need to do, you could actually get three point seven five on your damage at night. So what you want to do is at night, you want to uh, unequip covert, so that way the game registers Sandman first, then covert, so that the game registers it in Mr. Sandman first and covert next. Let me show you. What that does. 3.75. Headshot. And see how fast I get these crits back? See how fast I'm getting these crits back after using them? And if you see there's two numbers, look at that second number as it pops up. I'll go ahead and down a score piece right here. Okay, so as I said, I want to show you the easy way to get maximum damage without using chems. Now you can add chems to this and make this even more ridiculous. But if you have chems, you probably don't have too many and you don't want to waste them other than boss fights. So I'm going to show you without using chems how you can get a lot of damage. And it's this perk right here, Revenant. When a player revives you, you gain 50% more damage for two minutes. You say, how you play a solo? How do you do this solo? Glad you asked. A full set of life saving. It just has to be one star. You don't have to have all the second star, third star perks. I just happen to have these. Um, I've collected these over time. So it's the when incapacitated, which means you're downed, and a 50% chance to revive yourself with a stim pack once every minute. Okay? And that stacks all the way up to a 98% chance per piece. Alright? They're saying, well, how do I, do I let someone kill me? No. No. Simply equip Demo Expert, or use some kind of food, toxic goo, whatever you want, and just proceed to, you know, all I want to do is shoot the ground, down myself, boom, I'm back up. Notice at the beginning, you know, now my B2525 is doing a base damage of... Wait, let me get back into Nerd Rage. Hold on, hold on. Now that I'm in Nerd Rage, let's see the damage on this. 202. So we went from 173 to 202. That alone, let's see what this does here. And crits almost never miss. Let's get Tenderizer to activate. All right. 958. Yeah, they're dying so quick to the point. Tenderizer has no time to register and activate. Neither does follow through. So I'm just literally. Like, it's taking two shots to kill him. Um, but that's just me tapping the trigger once because this is a faster fire rate. But let me actually show you. Let's do a little easier test. Let's do something that fires a lot slower. Uh, oh, we're still getting that damage. This is an anti-armor, 50 crit. Oh. This is still one tapping. Oh, wait, that did. That did. 1300 right there, all right. Because Tenderizer and Follow Through had time to kick in. Those dogs are tanky, man. We won't go in here. Alright, so 
it's still 250, so now your sword piece have a lot of good enough health to the point where we can still use the bloody for probably not having revenant anymore. Yeah, revenant's gone. Um Alright, he should be active with Tenderizer, follow through, 881, 1125, easy. Easy. Simply, and I did take, you didn't see when I ate that food, I did take Blight Soup, which increases your crit damage by 40%. That's it, that's all I took for chems. Or not chems, but buffs. See? I'm already back in sneak. Look at that. Oh, danger. Hold on. Get out of here. Kill that gun. Kill that gun. Now let's see what the gun with 50 crit damage. Anti armor, 50 crit. Okay. One, one, four, one, nice. Crits never miss, like, ever. Not even a crit, and I want to have them. So as you can see, that's ammo conservation, that's DPS, and definitely survivability. As you notice, I got meleeed, I got attacked, and I still kept on doing what I was doing. Um, that's really all there is to it. I'll go over here. There is one more score piece. There is one more Scorch Beast over here. So yes, if you want something, you don't have to have a B2525. You just have to have the prefix, bloodied. Damage increases as health decreases. Mm -hmm. I know there's a one with increases, that's Juggernauts, but that came, that is new, that is fresh. This is this is better than Juggernauts. This, is, this prefix has been in the game since launch. Bloodied, just have health. Damage increases, health decreases. The correct mods, you want Prime. Because a lot of these enemies in this game are Scorched. So you want Prime, so you can do extra damage to Scorched and Scorched Beasts. Okay? And also Prime receivers do the most damage, period. A Lion Long Barrel, you want that maximum range while using less Vats. A Lion Long Barrel does reduce the AP cost in Vats. Forceful Stock is best durability and adds the best durability along with decreases AP bats. Okay. Stinging magazine. Uh, it is not the most um AP efficient mod. It is probably the second or third, but it does add more, you know, five more shots in your mag, and also does armor penetration, which is very key to more damage. Reflex is less AP cost in the vats, and same thing with suppressor, okay? That's what you need on your fixers. Now, if you want to, if you wanna have fun with this, uh, let's say you don't have bloodied, but you have anything that's executioners. Uh, where is executioners? Right here. Below 50%, or do 50% more multiplicative damage my target is below 40%, so this 50% stacks with Tenderizer and with Follow Through, which I've mentioned several times, right here. 40% more damage for 10 seconds, so 40% stacks with 10%, stacks with this 50% when your target is below 40%. Alright, so what we'll do, we still got some time, better hurry up. Before it gets daytime, we'll use all our damage, or not all our damage, just the bonus. We'll just down ourselves. Now the water's screwing me over. Oh no, I didn't. 
Oh, I didn't put on armor. Oh, I didn't put on the armor piece. I'm an idiot. Whoops. Alright, we're back. Hold on. We are back. He forgot to put on the armor piece. That's great. Time, yes, so put on life saving, five pieces, 98% chance to revive yourself. Every minute, that is. Yeah. Okay. On yielding, one, two, three, four, five. Don't forget to put your armor back on. Get yourself back into nerd rage. Be a gamma, or however you would like, okay? Let's hit this guy with the sneak shot, get him out of his little hiding hole. Can you land? Is that guy gonna... Can he land? Can he land? Can he land? Hondo when he hit below four when he hit below forty percent. Wow. That's good. So, yeah, basically you really want to make sure you're doing this right after six PM in game, between six PM and six AM rather. Have both of these equipped, but when it comes six PM, unequip covert, boom, re equip it, boom, three point seven five and sneak. Okay. Adrenaline, every kill you get increases your gun's damage for 30 seconds and the kills refresh the damage increase and refreshes the duration. Okay. Gun Fu, so you can snap the targets as you were seeing. Every time I would kill one, it would snap to the next one that was available. And sometimes it's even so, it's so powerful to the point where sometimes it'll briefly, sometimes it'll snap through a wall and you could... Target an enemy very briefly, like very briefly through a wall. So if you're still shooting, you have that slight chance that when it snaps to that target behind a wall, you can kill them. If you don't kill them in time, the bats will actually kick you out of bats. But if you're, if you're fast enough, this thing will actually lock on through walls. It's pretty insane. Nerd Rage, damage when you're below 20% health. Tenderizer, so after you've attacked, assuming the enemy has enough health to survive, which most of these everyday mobbing enemies do not. Um, this will kick in and your damage will boost by a lot. Revenant. You revive yourself with life-saving armor, which you can find in vendors. It is very common armor. There is nothing valuable about the armor other than that it can just revive you. Okay. Even some pieces would work. You have a, you still have a good chance. It's still a 50% chance at least to revive yourself. So at least you have that. It's still a high chance, so if you can at least get one or two pieces, you'll be fine. Kill yourself. Take yourself back up when you stand up. Put your armor back on. Use a gamma gun, toxic goo, do whatever you have to to get your rads to get you back into nerd rage. And you can get 50% more bonus damage for two minutes, which is still a good amount of time. Okay? All the commando guards to increase your base weapon damage, you need that. You need to be able to penetrate through armor to do more damage. Okay? And other than that, that is all I really have for you. And don't forget, bloodied mess, every little bit of damage counts. Okay? Better crits, quick hands you can swap out, but for the sake of this video and for the tips, please use them, especially if you know you really just want to do things a lot faster, you want to have better DPS, you just want more damage. Definitely, definitely, definitely use these. And crit savvy is a must, okay? Armor. You want to have... You don't have to have refresh and food and drink cam. Or even weapon weight reduce. You don't have to have that. That's not important, okay? That's not important. I know a lot of people look at me in my comments and my videos like, Ah, oh, you have all these god rolls, man. That's why you're doing so good. No. 
has nothing to do with this. It has nothing to do with why I can solo a queen. There's literally corn soup. There's literally such easy recipes that give you AP regen just like AP refresh armor. Like it's there's literally no difference between the food buffs and what this does. Okay, so you don't have to have these other two perks. You just need one star unyielding gain plus three. So all stats when low health that should make you feel a lot more relieved because it is so easy to get. You just post on Reddit, Facebook, wherever you. If if you don't if you're not on any of those sites, consider making an account. There's lots of really really solid trading groups that people are actually. Not only there to just trade if you have something to trade, but they also have, you know, they're willing to help. Because a lot of us players in there and those groups have been playing this game since forever. We've collected random pieces of unyielding that have not only one star, but just have random second and third stars for bonuses that we don't mind giving away, even if it's just for a few caps. Like, if you have caps and you just want one star unyielding pieces, collect them. As long as you have one star unyielding, if you have five star, or sorry. If you have five pieces of one star unyielding, that is enough to get you 33 luck. Um, and crit savvy, you'll be hitting every other shot. Is it going to be critical? Mutations are the last thing I want to go over. Adrenal reaction. These mutations are not very hard to get. The plans are expensive to learn. We well, don't have to learn the plans. You can just ask a friend, ask someone on um, these trading groups. But more than likely... Or vendor hop even vendors have these. Um, adrenal reaction increases your damage at low HP, so that's more damage right there. Okay. You need that. You definitely need that. Bird bones. Um, you don't need that. Um, if you really, if you want extra sneak, by all means, use bird bones. But the important ones is adrenal reaction. Eagle eyes, which increases your perception for accuracy. And increases your damage for crit damage, which is multiplicative. So you need crit damage. So adrenal reaction, eagle eyes, okay. Herbivore, because for range builds, you do not use carnivore. I know it's easy to pick up meat off of dead bodies and just eat them and catch no disease and feel your hunger. But that is not the way this is meant to be played. Your range build you need herbivore. Carnivore is for melee characters that want melee damage. That is what food, that is what meat does. Meat is for the strength in this game. That is what melee is built around, a strength that is carnivore. We are ranged, we are herbivore. We do range buffs for crit damage. Uh, on Blight Soup, the one I showed you that does, you know, what is it, where is it? Uh, hold on. Now you don't have to do what I'm doing. I, I can afford to do this, so that's why I'm doing it. I'm just taking these serums every hour to negate negative effects, but you do not need to do this, especially because all the mutations I'm running are, or most of these ones I'm running are personal to me that I personally just like to use. Um, and you guys do not have to use them. Herb mentality, supio. Okay, so adrenal reaction. Eagle eyes. Herbivore. Because for Blight Soup, which, uh, where is it at? 40% crit damage. If you were not running Blight Soup, well, if you were, if you had the Carnivore mutation, this would do nothing for you. You'd have zero any damage. You would have 0%. Blight Soup would not help you. But if you had no mutations, no Carnivore, Herbivore, you'd just be getting 20. Because your Herbivore, it increases the effects of all veggies and Herbivore food. So you get plus another 20%, all right? So after herbivore, and also there's a lot of other good stuff that I can show in a later video if you guys want, that there's other food buffs that can give you a massive amount of AP regen, not just corn soup, but there's lots of ones for AP regen. There's ones that for crit damage that can last over an hour. There's food buffs for carnivore or for herbivores that give you insane xp boost and intelligence boost which gives you even more xp i can show you there's so many good buffs and things you can do with herbivore as a range build um herbivore is so powerful marsupial you get that plus to your carry weight which is great especially if you're needing that extra carry weight and you need mutations marsupial is what you need and the jump height um as you can see this may not look too special but if you're not using marsupial you'll probably only jump 
not even as high as my character's height. You probably won't even get that high. This marsupial allows you to hop around, makes it easier to jetpack if you have a jetpack, so on and so forth. And then we have Speed Demon. Okay. So Adrenal Reaction. Make sure you guys write this down. Adrenal Reaction. Eagle Eyes. Herbivore. Marsupial. Speed Demon. That is what you need. The other ones you see, I have personal preferences. Not anything you need. Do not worry. I did say this in the past, and a lot of a lot of people were worrying. They're like, oh, you know what? Forget the build. I don't want it anymore. This is expensive. No. You just need Adrenal, Eagle Eyes, Herbivore, Marsupial, Speed Demon. And no, you do not need to take the things every hour. Okay? I just do that because over time, you know, I have people, friends, lots of friends, lots of people I know. They give me all these materials and things I need to craft. I can craft infinitely. I craft... These, you take these serums just to negate because I have all these extra mutations. It just helps that I just make all of them and take them all each hour so that I can negate all negative effects. Because um, some of these negative effects of these mutations are a little bit nasty. Not the ones that you guys need, though, the one, but the other ones that I have on here, like Egghead and Grounded and Healing Factor are in scaly skin especially they have some pretty nasty negative effects but those aren't the ones that you need to use general reaction when it runs out when that serum runs out after that hour all that's going to happen is you'll just get a slight reduction to your max hp which your max hp if you see in the bottom the max hp is the right side so what it actually does to the left side is it only brings it down by about 15 points which is not bad at all it's nothing Okay. You're already bloody threshold. So imagine what I have now, just you have like 48 health. You have probably have like 45 or 48, which is still a lot for being bloodied. That's all the general reaction does is it just subtracts from your max HP. Eagle eyes, it just reduces your strength slightly. Just I think it's like minus three or minus four. It's like nothing. It does reduce your carry weight a little bit, but I mean it it's not really a terrible negative effect. It doesn't do anything to your AP, to your damage resistance, to your gun damage, whereas there's a lot of mutations that will affect those things afterwards. But Eagle Eyes only affects your strength. Herbivore has zero negative effects, um, period. There is no negative effects of it. You just have no benefits of eating meat, which is not a problem because you won't be eating meat for this build. Marsupial is a... It is a reduction in, oh, it is a reduction in intelligence. You have an intelligence reduction, it's slight, it's like two or three, which just reduces your overall, what's it called, uh, XP gain. Marsupial just reduce, it basically when it reduces your intelligence, it just that, that just reduces your AP gain by like 4%, which is nothing. You're just getting a reduction in intelligence. Speed Demon, when it wears off, you just get thirsty and hungry a lot faster, which, thank God, if you're new to this game, you will not know the struggle. But before One Wasteland, or I forgot what the update was, I think it was One Wasteland that did this too. But before One Wasteland, for since launch of this game in 2018, we, when you got near starving and thirsty, when you got near thirsty, your character's AP, so just like my health bar has the red rads, your AP bar will start to gain the red as well. And you would actually get fatigued, and the more fatigued you were, the more AP you lost. And you can get almost and you almost to the point where you had no AP left to use, the more thirsty you were. Um, so bottled water was important, so important, like drinking all the time. Uh, being famished, um, that did about a little bit of the same thing. It did some to your AP, but also mainly affected your overall health your hp rather what did it, it affected something else shoot can't remember but actually but what i'm trying to say is before one wasteland being thirsty and hungry actually affected your playing it actually affected your playtime. it affected your experience it affected the way you played 
But now, after one wasteland, they remove it. So yeah, your character will still get hungry and thirsty, but it won't affect your HP, it won't affect your AP, it won't affect anything. Right? It literally affects nothing. Speed Demon, when it, the serum wears off, your character just gets thirsty and hungry faster. Which was a problem before one wasteland, but now it is not a problem. You don't even have to worry about your thirst or hunger. So, essentially, general reactions, eagle eyes, marsupial, herbivore, speed demon. It's all you need. The downsides, as I just said, are nothing. There's literally no downsides to those mutations. Um, and yeah. That's about it. Revenant. Make sure you're using it. Life-saving armor. Hope you guys enjoyed the build. I know it was a little bit long video, but I want to make sure I explain things that I had not explained previously. Um, and uh, yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Things you want to see in the future for me to cover, food buffs, things you're not sure of, just ask me. I'll answer it. Um, I don't know when the next time I play this game again is. I, I only play it for your guys' sake because right now I'm just waiting for the upcoming update next month that will add a custom world where I can customize my damage. And I can do damage like I was doing pre One Wasteland. And we can customize the weather. And it's going to be fun. I'm actually excited for a Fallout update for the first time in a very, very long time. Um, that's when I'll start playing this game more. And you'll start seeing more builds. You'll start seeing more variety. You'll start seeing a lot. Because they're also fixing Grenadier. Which is going to make Goss Shotguns, once again, extremely OP and great. So Goss Shotguns... Will be fixed and i will be not and once it comes to adventure mode i'm probably you'll probably never see me use commando ever again once they bring back that grenadier perk and buff the uh, shotguns with it so but for now if you really like stealth commando and you're interested this is definitely for you i have a lot of older videos that go over this build and different aspects of it if you really want to see it if you want to challenge yourself if you basically have this build but you want to challenge yourself further for boss fights all my other videos show it the boss fights the boss build the boss buffs the way I play them, how you're supposed, how the best way to play them is, sort of survivability of the build. It's all in the old videos. You guys can watch them. If you don't want to watch them, you don't know where to look, you can always ask me and I can tell you, you know, exactly what you need to know. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed and have a good one.